Um, magandang umaga, maganda at mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day everyone, especially yung mga nasa online. At of course, yung mga present dito ngayon sa PHTRC for this very, uh, actually, second natin to na hybrid session ng Fresh Talks, the PHTRC webinar series kasi ito talaga yung pinanganak ng lockdown. So we're um, live here at the PHTRC Annex Training Room and also um, we'll be recorded live and uh, ma-review ma ito ng ating online audience sa uh, Facebook page ng PHTRC. And um, siguro medyo uh, we're very fr uh, fresh from the holidays and we are all ready to feed our minds again with information and knowledge. Uh, this time, from the ninth episode of Fresh Talks, the PHTRC webinar series, which is brought to you by the Post-Harvest Horticulture Training and Research Center. So, today's seminar or webinar is special as it serves as a homecoming featuring a former boss, <laughs> an acting director of the PHTRC, and once a chairman of the former Department of Horticulture way before or long before na ma-establish yung ating what we now uh, call and uh, we now know as the Institute of Crop Science under the College of Agriculture and Food Science. He will be sharing with us his uh, very uh, vast experience in African agriculture during his stint at the World Bank. Okay. So we are just as excited as our live and virtual audience as this seminar promises to be an insightful one with some cultural dimensions to it and lessons that we can learn from and hope to apply to local agriculture. So we invite everyone to sit back, relax, and please stay tuned um, during the rest of the webinar. Okay, so this is Deng Maunahan and I will be your host for today's webinar. Now we go to the house rules. Again, we are simultaneously viewed by uh, Zoom and later uh, recorded live sa uh, PHTRC Facebook page. And a uh, reminder to our participants, please fill out the attendance form at bit.ly slash freshtalks. EP9A, the link is sent in Zoom chat box uh, comment section for Zoom attendees. And we encourage everyone to ask questions during our Q&A segment after the presentation of our resource speaker. A Google link form at uh, bit.ly slash fresh talks EP9Q for the questions will be provided in the Zoom chat box. And only those who completed and submitted the attendance form and evaluation form will receive certificate. So, importante na mag-fill out tayo nitong dalawang forms natin for both attendance and evaluation. So, to start the ball rolling in today's program, may we call on Dr. Elda B. S. Guerra, adjunct professor of the Institute of Crop Science, to give the opening message. Thank you, Deng. Um, an opening message. <laughs> Just to formally welcome uh, yung mga physically uh, present dito. Ano? So, yung takibag kaya si pang matanda yata itong webinar na po. <laughs> Puro matanda ka, no? Uh, retired na rin po ako. So, napag uh, na the director, si Dr. Dormita del Carmen, uh, requested me to uh, give uh, a brief uh, welcome uh, remarks doon sa mga physically present in this uh, seminar, kum webinar. So magandang araw sa uh, inyong lahat, sa ating lahat, lalo na doon sa aming mga avid uh, supporters and followers doon sa Facebook. So we are now streamed live with on sa Facebook. So shout out to sa aming mga supporters and followers. You're always present. No? We are really impressed, no? 
doon sa pinapakita yung uh, lagi kayong naandya tapos marami na papadagdag yung recent namin this year this is the third thing no this year ng ating fresh talk patatlo na tong kay sir no? this year dalawa yung hybrid pero yung isa natin um, during the ano so in behalf of the director we uh, welcome you dito sa ating uh, Uh, seminar, webinar dito sa Fresh Talks. No? Sa lahat ng mga ka-freshes namin, uh, good morning ulit. Uh, ngayong araw na to, sabi nga ni Deng, uh, we are um, lucky to have our one of the elders, one of our mentors, the former boss uh, namin dito sa PHTRC uh, to give us uh, an insight on the The other side of the other side ba ng continent ng ano yung lang yun? <laughs> Kasi if you will remember, uh, last year during our uh, anniversary, no, uh, meron tayong tatlong uh, webinars, meron tayong speakers that uh, came from Australia, and then the other one is from Korea, no, and then the other one is from uh, the USA, no? And then, if you still remember, kung kayo follower na namin noon, pa meron din kami nag-speaker sa isang webinar, New Zealand naman experience. No? So, itong uh, last March, ang amin namang uh, speaker sa webinar during the uh, foundation uh, anniversary ng College of Agriculture and Food Science ay ano, gustong gusto yun, taga Jollibee. No? <laughs> <laughs> Jollibee Group Foundation. So maganda yung kanya mga insights uh, in terms of value chain analysis and management in terms of the yung kanilang corporate social responsibility in helping the farmers no to um to yung sa kanilang productivity no and, and of course increase the income. So this year this is the second uh, hybrid webinar. Noong February ba yun, si from Korea naman yon ulit, na ulit yung Korea. Ngayon naman, iba naman ang marinig natin. Ngayon tayo lang makakarinig doon sa other, sa other continent from Africa. So, si uh, Dr. Kesumbing, talaga hindi niya malilimutang pupunta dito sa PHDRC <laughs> at biniimbita namin. So, ano naman siya, very much willing Uh, to give uh, some insights on the uh, on his experiences in terms of his stint uh, during his World Bank um, uh, ano nga tawag doon? Basta na trabaho si Sir sa World Bank. Expert yan. Uh, ano nga tawag doon, Sir? Technical expert. But anyway, mamaya malalaman nyo ano mong pinagagawa ni Sir doon sa World Bank pag introduce ni uh, Dr. Bautista. Basta marami siyang tinulungan. No? And Malaki din ang naging tulong ni uh, Dr. Kisumbing nung nando siya sa World Bank because we had had uh, two trainings, I think, uh, trainees from Mozambique, sir, and Kenya, na nagpunta dito sa PHTRC for the training on post-harvest uh, management of fresh produce. So, again, welcome sa inyong lahat for those physically present and those uh, listening doon sa ating uh, Facebook no? uh, stream. Okay. So, Deng? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sgera. Talagang si Dr. Sgera is always here, always around. <laughs> hindi, hindi reason yung retirement. Napaka-active na mga nagre-retire dito. Talagang ayaw nilang umalis sa university. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, may we request everyone for a uh, photo opportunity first, those on Zoom. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, pasensya na po dun sa mga nasa Zoom at talagang, <laughs> syempre kailangan may picture din yung live audience. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Now we will call on Dr. Ophelia K. Bautista. Uh, also one of our mentors, one of our former directors. And for those who are familiar with the post-harvest book, yan, yung daw book na ang cover ay ano, aling nagtitinda ng cabbage. Well, after he got his PhD from the University of Minnesota, he joined 
the uh, UPLD staff. As a professor of the department, after he got his PhD from the University of Minnesota, he joined the, uh, the UPLB. And he was a very good professor. I can assure you that because I was one of his students <laughs> in a graduate course. Although he's just one year ahead of me, but he got his PhD much ahead of me. Well, in the 70s, it was through his effort that the Board of Regents was uh, able to approve the creation of the Department of Horticulture and became its first uh, chairman. The Department of Horticulture is one of the pillars of the now Institute of Crop Science. At PHTRC, he was the director, acting director for one year while I was in Tanzania to join my husband. <laughs> he was in Kenya uh, once when I passed through there. He was assigned uh, by World Bank for three years in Kenya. As the Deputy Executive Director of the National Food and Agriculture Council, and then as Assistant uh, Secretary or Minister of the uh, Department or Ministry of Agriculture and Food, he was uh, responsible for the implementation of uh, all the production programs of agriculture and nutrition programs as well. And he represented the country in the consultative group of, for international agriculture in Washington, DC. He was also the chairman of the uh, Committee on Food, Agriculture and Forestry of the uh, ASEAN, ASEAN ministers of agriculture. And, and this is the committee that was responsible for the creation of the PhD of the ASEAN PHTRC, that's the Regional Center for Post Harvest uh, of Reachables in, in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It provided also for its operating expenses from 1977 to 1985. It also was responsible for the establishment of the initial laboratories on post harvest of the other ASEAN countries, uh, countries of ASEAN. He was responsible for the overseeing the implementation of projects from externally funded uh, sources. So, uh, he was responsible for the implementation of projects from the uh, Asian Development Bank, from the World Bank, from US, Japan, um, the uh, European Union and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Council. As proof of his outstanding achievements in agricultural development, in the Philippines and abroad. He was the recipient of the 10 outstanding young men of the Philippines in 1978. Actually, this was his second time to be uh, nominated uh, for that. He joined the World Bank in 1988 as agriculture research specialist and senior agriculturist. So more than ever, he was involved in the international scene. Uh, especially in 11 countries of Africa and two in Asia. He played a major role in establishing and strengthening the research and extension systems of these countries. After he joined the World Bank, he donated some money to PHTRC, and that became the seed money for a PHTRC endowment fund. The first project of which was the awarding of um, of uh, a Manuel Bikisumbing Award 
to honor the memory of his father. Now that uh, Kitty hasn't grown that much, so we use only the interest of that uh, fund to give an award. So it's given only every five years. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> here in this room and <laughs> oh, those hearing us online, let us uh, welcome to our fold again, a, a friend, a colleague, and an agriculturist of international caliber, Dr. Edgardo Sikisumbing. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you all who, have, who are attending the seminar live and uh, via the internet. And thank you, Director, for inviting me to make this presentation. Actually, when I was approached to give a presentation on post-harvest handling in Africa, I, I told the organizers of this seminar that that would be a very short seminar because I will probably only need about 10 minutes to talk about it because post-harvest handling, when I was working in Africa, was practically non-existent. So I asked that maybe I should expand the topic to include some of my experiences in Africa, particularly in agricultural development. They have agreed and here am I now. In, uh, in Africa, uh, there was a very thriving research extension and technology development system all over the colonies of European countries, particularly uh, Great Britain. There was established in uh, UK, the British uh, social, uh, social service uh, uh, sort of category of workers, the British social service. And these are people selected from all over the countries and sent to Africa to help the Africans actually produce what the home country needed. So the basic purpose of this British social uh, executive uh, service was to produce what the home country needed. Uh, the research was conducted by uh, foreigners with very little uh, effort to train local capability in these fields. And so when, when uh, the countries gained independence, they decided not to be under the rule of the European countries. Uh, research extension and agricultural development practically, practically uh, uh, stopped. Tribing uh, agricultural enterprises like the vast uh, livestock enterprise in Rhodesia, which is now known as, uh, what's this, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, disappeared. And uh, because the Zimbabwe government decided to split up the uh, ranches at the big corporation into small parcels of land and, you know, in livestock, that will not work. You need large areas. So all over, there was neglect. And this is where I came in. Uh, my first introduction to African agriculture was in 1988. After uh, two years in, uh, in UPLB as a professor, I was invited to go to Kenya to take a look at a project that has not been moving as well as it should move. <clears throat> that project was one of the efforts of, <clears throat> of national, uh, international organizations to help develop uh, African agriculture across the continent. This happened to be a project supported by World Bank and it had been under implementation for two years but only $150,000 
had been spent after two years. So there was a threat of canceling the project as, as impossible to implement. So the World Bank asked me to take a look and see if there is anything that could be done. So I did. I went all over Kenya, reviewed activities of this uh, bus network of centers, dilapidated centers, and came up with my recommendations. A month later, I was hired to implement those recommendations that I had made. At any rate, uh, I worked not only in Kenya, but also in Uganda and Tanzania to do the same thing, upgrade research and extension capacity, establish linkages with local universities and the national research system, which I did in Uganda and Tanzania and in uh, Kenya. In, uh, in uh, Somalia, we had a project, but uh, linkage with the university was difficult because the university was not uh, well established yet. And in, in other places, uh, I did not have much involvement, like in, in Mozambique, in, in Rhodesia, in uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and many other countries. I was just asked as a, to join the missions of the World Bank as a, a resource person. I was not responsible. But for Kenya, Uganda, <clears throat> and, uh, and Tanzania, these were formerly members of the East African community. We had a very extensive research network in these three countries. And this, were my, this was my task to revive what used to be. And, uh, and uh, so um, the, the, first, the first thing I had to do was, what does Africa need? Well, of course, food. So what are the foods that they want or they need? Uh, fortunately for Africa, the conditions there uh, negated the uh, vast uh, growing of rice as a staple crop because it's very dry in Africa and rice happens to be the most voracious water requiring crop in the world. So I found out that almost 80% of the Africans were, were uh, having cassava as their uh, staple crop. The next crop that was uh, very widely used was banana. You know, banana in, uh, in Africa uh, is different from our banana in the sense that our, the bananas that we commonly see are table bananas, fruit bananas, eaten fresh. In Africa, in Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, these places were about 50 million people depend on this type of African banana. The banana is grown uh, until it is mature, green, and then harvested green. Then it is cooked for its starch. When it ripens, it's no, long, no longer good. Now, if you are familiar or if you have tried Ethiopian food, what the serve like is like, what the serve like, uh, hand towels, parantualia. Now let me go, go back and say that this, this uh, inset was very useful. I think it's only grown in, in Ethiopia and Eritrea. The other minor crop grown in Ethiopia and Eritrea is teff, T-E-F-F. -F. It's a grass, it's like rice, a grass and it is harvested for its seeds. Again, you can take a look at your cell phone and see what it looks like. Uh, when, when processed and served, it looks like a towel, you know? So you're like eating a towel, which is a starchy preparation of this crop. Uh, it, it's not a major crop, 
it's a minor crop. <clears throat> then they have, of course, millet, sorghum, chickpeas is very popular. So these were the crops that needed atten attention. And when we started our programs, we devoted a lot of effort towards improving the production of these crops. Now, to, to, to summarize the work I have done, I would like to emphasize that you would probably be surprised to know that UPLB has played a major role in, uh, in the development of African agriculture. Can we show the slide, please, of uh, people who work in Africa? Uh, in Kenya, Tanzania, and, uh, and Uganda, I relied heavily on the services of Jomadamba. I guess you might have heard of him. Del Ganapen and uh, Dr. Raman. He is a Bangladeshi who got his PhD from UPLB. Uh, Jomadamba and Del got their BS from UPLB, taught at UPLB, but got their PhDs abroad. Then we have Mani Henio, Emmanuel Henio, who has his PhD uh, from UPLB, together with Vic Magno and Nes Mariano, they revolutionized extension delivery in uh, Eastern Africa. Arsene Kemio worked for a while in Ethiopia. Mani Palada, uh, he is very active still in the Philippines, served at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Ibadan and has been responsible for uh, introducing multiple cropping in uh, Africa. Henry Magalit, a professor of mine, I met in uh, Kenya. He was in charge of statistics, uh, biometrics uh, statistics in uh, one of the institutes for tropical medicine. And it was him who introduced proper data uh, gathering and analysis. Saka Gampang also responsible for starting another rice research institute in, uh, in uh, West Africa, together with Thomas Ao. Now, uh, in uh, FAO headquarters, all the extension efforts were supported by Tito Contado, who was the division chief for extension in the FAO. Now, there were many others who contributed. Uh, Nestor Navasero developed, together with Pado Padolina, developed small tools and equipment that were suitable for Sub-Saharan Africa. Vic Magno, uh, Nes Mariano, were very strong in extension forestry, whereby they taught the communities to take care of the natural resources, the trees, the, uh, the animals, so that they could encourage local tourism whereby they would make money. And uh, I would like to mention Larry Impig. Uh, he is a agronomy plant breeder. When he arrived in Kenya, he found out that the Kenyans were doing research forever on the development of varieties when such varieties were ready for introduction already. So he told them, stop doing research on this, introduce these varieties. And that revolutionized corn production in the whole of East Africa. Uh, Mani Lantin uh, was involved because he was in Washington providing money for international centers who were also engaged in helping Africa. I mean, Campo came later. He worked in Mozambique. So these are the people that you can see uh, that there are so many of them and many of them played a very important role in uplifting 
agriculture in Africa. So thanks to UPLB for training these individuals who have made tremendous impact on Africa. So I would like to end my talk in saying that uh, while we are here in a small country in the Philippines, we, have, we are, I think, one country that has done a lot to improve the well-being of African people. And there is very little known about this. We are better believed outside our country than we are within our country. People listen to us. We speak and they listen. In here, uh, I think the, the usual is, what's in it for me, unfortunately. Now, but there are, there are uh, very outstanding Filipino leaders, but uh, the, the, the thing that is most important is political will from the top. You should have a strong political will. And uh, surprisingly, during our time, President Ferdinand Marcos provided that political will that made us work. And look what we have done during that time. We exported rice. We did not import sugar. We did not import sibuyas because we had strong leadership. Unfortunately, uh, President Marcos uh, got sick. He had lupus. And I think during the later years of his life, he was not under much control anymore. Again, uh, we are good people. We are talented people. We have helped others more than we have helped ourselves because our leaders did not give us the political will to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kisumbing, for that very insightful and very interesting, in fact, engaging, especially for those who have just heard about Africa and uh, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, whatever you, what other countries, Tanzania, Kenya. So, sounds strange, <laughs> sounds very far away. So, uh, at this point, uh, we, will, uh, we would like to uh, engage the other, the online viewers, especially those on Zoom. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. So our resource speaker for those uh, Zoom participants, they may send their questions using the Google form bit.ly slash fresh talks EP9Q. That's in the chat box. And for those uh, who will be, okay. Medyo delayed telecast pala tayo ngayon sa Facebook, so it will be uh, recorded and uh, streamed later. For our live audience, oh yeah, uh, you may just raise your hands to be acknowledged and please state your name and affiliation before shooting your question. So, any brave soul who wants to start the ball rolling? First question. Uh, so okay, before we before we go on with the questions, uh, I would just like to uh, acknowledge uh, the people who have earlier registered and probably they're on Zoom. I cannot see everyone uh, there, but uh, we have uh, re uh, participants from Ifugao, as far as Ifugao, Ilocos Norte, Pangasinan, so that's Region 1 and uh, Cordillera. We have from Isabela, Tarlac, Bulacan. The Nueva Ecija, Nueva Vizcaya, we have from La Union. Of course, NCR, the different provinces. For Bicol, well attended them. May Katanduan Estario, we have as far as Masbate, Kamsur, and Sorsogon. And uh, Benguet, also pala doon sa CAR. We have from Misamis Oriental, from the Visayas, Capi, Leyte, Negros Oriental, Iloilo. We have the Davao del Sur people, Northern Samar. Marinduque, Cebu, Romblon, Aklan. Of course, way down under, we have Lanao provinces, Sambuanga, Marawi, Maguindanao, South Cotabato. And hindi ko alam if he's online now, but we have a faculty from Nepal who registered. So anyway, if it's there, hello, hi. 
Eh, ano ba ngayon oras doon? Good evening ba? Or we're not sure. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. Good evening somewhere in the world. <laughs> okay. So, Miss Vanna, it's connecting. I cannot see the wait line. We have the first question from can we, ano, can we say the, ano, the name? <laughs> Patrick De Leon. Oh, sinabi na nga ni Sir. Patrick De Leon. Okay. Sir, in terms of yield or output and technology of production, how does African agriculture compare with Philippine agriculture? Ito way back pa, ha? <laughs> uh, this, this is very hard, hard to quantify, but speaking broadly, I would think that uh, if we consider 100% would be the contribution of Philippine agriculture, I would say that Africa would be around 40%. The levels of production are still very low. Uh, they hardly use fertilizers. It's practically uh, dig and plant in, in Africa. But they are blessed with fertile soils in some areas. So if you can dig, you can survive. Like in, in Uganda, when I arrived there, I visited a research station and uh, that station did not have any staff. They were gone by 10 o'clock. I asked the director, why? And he said, because I have to let them dig. Meaning he had to let them go so that they can plant cassava or bananas to survive. And that's how these people survive for a long time until uh, now modern agriculture is catching up with them. Next question. Okay. Oi, live audience. Any question? Oh, Dr. Bautista. In Tanzania, the people there eat raw cassava. Uh, how about in the other countries? Oh, uh, they're mostly processed. They're mostly processed. Uh, processed. They're cooked, yeah. But they use uh, in Tanzania they use uh, uh, raw cassava as a snack food, and it's sold in the in uh, the streets. They are not cooked. Not cooked. So I they not, said it's a sweet I have, variety. I have not seen that in. You haven't seen that. <laughs> Well, that's uh, our experience. I, I know that they don't know how to eat the seed of, uh, of Blanca. <laughs> they throw that away. I had to teach them that this is edible. And now they're eating the seeds of Blanca in Uganda. Yeah, that's very interesting. I, I, I cannot imagine uh, eating raw, raw cassava. But Not, definitely, maybe it's a different variety that they. Yeah, it's a sweet variety. Yeah. It doesn't contain the cyanogenic acid that okay. our varieties have. <clears throat> they so they, they don't cook okay. it. Okay. Tasted it. It's good. Yeah. Of course, I should. I still wanted the cooked cassava. <laughs> and then we taught them how to eat the seed of langka of jackfruit. So that's additional. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Emerut Bayoga. Good morning and thank you for your talk. Um, I'm from UP Mindanao po, adjunct professor. <laughs> Um, my my question is about uh, how would you compare the use of the indigenous vegetables by the African nations with that of our use here in the Philippines? It seems to me that they are very successful in commercializing and uh, letting people use indigenous vegetables uh, relative to ours, but I don't know. Your uh, thoughts, in, please. In Africa, they depend a lot on their indigenous plants. Uh, they utilize them much more than we are doing. So I think in that, in that area, we can, we can learn from them. OK, 
Okay, we have another online question from uh, Mr. Rosales. How can we improve our uh, Philippine agriculture at this present time? Well, if I, I knew that, I would be president of the Philippines. But since I'm not the president of the Philippines, the only thing I can, I can say is that use local talent, use the people you have, get rid of the scalawags who are preventing talented people from improving the state of Philippine agriculture. I think everybody knows who these are, but do we have the will to put these people aside and let the experts do the work? Back at all the countries abroad, rely on Filipino consultants to help them in Asia, Africa, South America. You see a lot of Filipinos helping those countries. Why, why can we not use these people here in our country? I think uh, people above me would know the answer and uh, they know the solution too. <laughs> okay, so it's really uh, uh, hammering on the political will to uh, be able to really revolutionize uh, Philippine agriculture. Well, that's a uh, food for thought for our uh, people in authority. Okay. Questions from the very young live audience? Yes, Francis. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for the talk. So I just have two questions so, uh, out of curiosity. So a while ago, you were mentioning po in Africa, um, there was a trend after yung pag-break po nung uh, research, uh, yung mga research centers po sa Africa, there's a trend po of having more fragmented uh, farms, so smaller parcels of land. And uh, from what I've studied, I remember that that trend is also applying these days here in the Philippines. So what I want to ask is how, uh, from your re uh, research in Africa, from what you did in Africa, how do we deal with this? And my second question is, I know um, when it comes to technology adoption here in the Philippines, you've mentioned that Filipinos are really resistant to uh, new technologies, so they're hesitant to uh, get these new technologies. So, from based also from your experience in Africa, how what would you recommend? What would what should we do so that technology adoption will be a lot easier here in the Philippines? Thank you. Should we break that down into three parts? The first part is uh, how, how did we do compared to African countries in revitalizing our research system? I think we have done a good deal, a lot of good in that sense. We have viable research centers, not only in the private sector, but we have research centers all over from government agencies to state colleges of agriculture. Uh, they are doing good work. And especially with the, with the advent of the training centers that were attached to uh, the, uh, what do you call, uh, state colleges and agri uh, of agriculture, uh, the technology coming from these, center, these institutes are readily available through these training centers. I, I don't know if this is still going on under ATI, ATI. Because, you know, I, I was responsible for getting ATI uh, survived. It was initially rejected by the World Bank. But when I went to attend the meeting that Dr. Uh, Secretary Tanko told me to attend, uh, the World Bank was already saying that they will, they will not approve ATI at that time. It was not ready. So I intervened and told the World Bank that I'm sent by Tanko, without Tanko knowing that this is what Secretary Tanko told me to tell you. And I outlined the, the relationship of a national center and regional centers attached to uh, uh, agricultural universities and these uh, training centers uh, relying on the expertise from this agricultural universities. And all that thing I outlined without telling Tanko. And the World Bank was so impressed that they gave us one month. And they said they will talk to Secretary Tango about it. 
And so when I got to my office, I told the secretary of Secretary Tanko that before the World Bank comes in to talk to the secretary, I want to brief him on what I committed him to do. But the secretary said that the World Bank are here already. So I had to rush down and when I opened the door, I was huffing and puffing and I said, Ed, what are you doing here? I said, boss, I, I told this gentleman, your idea of ATI and how the network will work? Oh yes, he said. And he carried on describing exactly what I described. This was how uh, we were so close to each other, the staff of the secretary and ourselves that we know what he's thinking, he knows what we're thinking, we know what the plans are, because every afternoon after work, we drink beer. At 10 o'clock, we change to scotch. There are only a few of them. Uh, anyway, that was how close we were at that time. The leadership and the staff were one. So we could speak for the secretary without clearing with him. And I, 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 I sort of wondered, would Tanko have supported me? And I talked to him about that uh, later on and he said, I would have darn supported you. That is what we want. So that's how. The second is, how do we improve uh, acceptance? Well, that's a sociological problem. And the sociologists have, will probably have more answer. But to me, the best is to show. Our, our focus should be on uh, on-farm trials, where we can show farmers this new technology and how it compares to theirs. It's only through that that they will be convinced. So, and I think we're doing a good deal of that now through our uh, farming systems uh, network. Uh, what was the third one? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our land reform tried to place all Filipinos on equal footing. So they divided large parcels to smaller parcels without paying attention to how those smaller parcels, uh, parcels would operate and would work. As a result, marami sa mga beneficiaries of land reform started to lease their land to the landowners. Kaya ang landowners pa rin magpapatakbo. Pero hindi na pangalan ng landowners. At any rate, uh, I am seeing a lot of movement towards corporate farming. I think that is the way to go. We should organize provinces as uh, corporate entities or municipalities. And they should manage production of vast areas of their land. Kaya lang, they need support, they need technical expertise. Pero kaya ang gawin eh. Uh, a lot of people are doing it now. So maybe this is one thing that the new administration can support. Corporate farming uh, provided with the resources like dryers, mechanization, uh, funding, lot. Instead of spending the money to import price, spend that money on these investments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Another question here from Zoom. Lychee is very good in Madagascar. Can we grow it here like they did in the wild? Kayo mga taga horticulture, what do you say? Dr. Coronel was growing lychee in, uh, in uh, Kalawan. It can grow in the Philippines. Pero namatay na si Dr. Coronel. I don't know if anybody is taking over the work he's doing. Uh, I wonder if Pabs uh, Pamplona is trying to propagate lychee. Uh, Pabs, if you are online, uh, let us know. Dr. Bayogan, can you say something about that? USM said. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, he's more Andorian. Uh, he's always uh, at all the... All kinds of langka. Yung mga makakapal na langka. Pink langka. 
Myron Jack. Okay, maybe Dr. Pamplona is really still very much around, uh, especially during the National Food uh, Congress Symposium every year. He's always there and sharing his wisdom with the younger generation of uh, horticulturists. So any more questions from, yes, please. Po. Um, I'm Jeremy Po. I'm a student here. And first of all, I would like to thank you for your enlightening talk. Um, I would like to ask, uh, this is just a curious personal question because according to DOST, uh, you have been very prolific on your research publications from 1970 to 1983. And you mentioned earlier that you started working in Africa by 1988. I worked in Africa in 1988. Uh, yes. So I'm just curious if, were you able to apply some of your research in, your, in Africa? Or were you also able to conduct research in Africa? Uh, uh, what I did instead of specific interventions was... Uh, research capability, developing capability. Kaya sila na ngayon ang gagawa. Because there's so many problems and I cannot possibly know all of them. But one thing I did, I did uh, influence them with is uh, in the use of organic matter. I had the help of Mani Palada in Kenya to introduce organic fertilizer, or manures, no? And there is a misunderstanding about manures or organic fertilizer. You cannot use organic fertilizer alone. Hindi, hindi kaya ng uh, nutrient source ang organic matter. Yung nutrients na kailangan ng plant. You have to add chemical fertilizer. You have to enrich it with NPK, uh, kung ano man. And then the beauty of organic matter is that it improves the quality of the soil. It improves the friability and water absorbing capacity. Kaya hindi masyadong madaling mag, matuyo. No? And then maganda ang cation exchange capacity ng organic matter, it can hold on to iron, nitrogen. Kaya hindi nag-leach out. You know what? Leaching out. So hindi na nawawala kung umuulan kasi kinakapitan ng organic matter yung mga yun because of the strong cation exchange capacity. So yun, I introduced to yung ano, and they are they are using it now in in Kenya. I tried to introduce it in Uganda, but not not very successful. Any more questions from the back? <laughs> from the back, at least I said from the back. We have uh, some returning uh, uh, PHTRC staff here at the back. So here are the new arrivals. Yes, Dr. Esguera. Fertilization alone will not will not solve the problem of productivity because there is a an increasing move towards uh, the use of organic fertilizers. Sabi natin kani na yung kasi mga mga chemical, mga synthetic uh, fertilizers na yan. Parang parang yun ang gusto nilang i-adapt ng hindi ko lang BA o ano. But sa marami na akong naringgan na ito na lang, ano, para hindi tayo ng problema sa importation, hindi baka, <laughs> because of that uh, war in Ukraine na pinanggagalingan natin ng mga fertilizers, why don't we just focus on using organic fertilizers? No? If, you are, if you will be the advisor of the present administration in BA, what will you tell them based on the experience? The first thing that should be done is to define what organic means. What is organic fertilizer? I ask each one of you, you'll have a different interpretation. 
mayroong manures. Uh, these are organic fertilizers coming out of cattle, out of chicken. Is this what you mean by organic fertilizer? How about composting leaves and all debris and all that? Is the compost that is produced organic fertilizer? So we need to have standards. At saka, ano ang nutrient concentration na may bibigay nitong organic fertilizer before we will recommend it? So kailangan siguro dadagdagan mo para all organic fertilizers will have NPK at same level. Pero ngayon, wala, organic fertilizer. Nagkana ko ng kwan, hindi ako gumagamit ng chemical. Organic fertilizer na yun. But how about using organic insecticides? Or is that organic uh, agriculture? Kaya, mahal ang bayad kasi kung organic eh. Organically produced crops. Pero we have not defined what it means. In the U.S., there is a very strict standard for claiming that your product is organic. You have to satisfy all kinds of uh, you know, uh, assessments and uh, examination of your practices before you can call your product organic. Dito sa atin eh. Ah, organic yan para mabenta ko ng mahal. Anybody can call this product organic. Walang, walang definition. Okay. Any more questions? Do we have more questions from the group? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if there's none, uh, let me thank, let us thank uh, Dr. Kisumbing again for sparing again some of his very precious time from his vacation on vacation and yet he still uh, managed to give us a talk this morning and um, at this juncture we will award the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Kisumbing okay okay so please allow me to read the citation this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Edgardo C. Kisunbing, PhD, for sharing his knowledge and expertise as a resource speaker during the PHTRC press talks, PHTRC webinar series, episode nine, Experience in African Agriculture, held on April 11, 2023 at the PHTRC Annex Training Room and via Zoom. Given this 11th day of April at the PHTRC, College of Agriculture and Food Science, UPILOTS Banos Laguna, signed Dr. Dermita Alder R. Del Carmen, Director of the PHTRC. May we ask again, Dr. Esguera, to, yes, because you did the opening remarks, might as well. <laughs> there. Okay, thank thank you again, sir, for this uh, no, for your time, and uh, okay, of course, uh, we will be calling now the assistant to the director of the PHTRC to give us the closing remarks. May we call on Miss Wella Absulio Morales. Okay, so sir and everyone, allow me to read this uh, short uh, closing remarks. And again, good morning. And sir, thank you very much for uh, giving uh, your time and sharing uh, valuable lessons to everyone. And to all the participants of Fresh Talks online and here at PHTRC, thank you very much. Um, we are very fortunate to have heard and had a brief walkthrough in the development of African agriculture. Uh, through these, we have points to remember and we've learned a lot. And, and during the talk, we further realized 
the advantage of strong collaborations and the significant contributions of us, of UPLB. And we also realized that we have, or better yet, uh, we are good and talented people. So hopefully we'll have the willpower to help and uh, use local talents. We have to see, and uh, we also have to realize what we really ne need to focus on the crops that we have to work on and to be able to get a good uh, results. And again, it is also important that the leadership and the staff or the uh, those working are one, as mentioned by Dr. Gisumbing. So we really have to have a good teamwork. So again, we look forward to having you all again in the next episodes of Fresh Talks. And uh, you may also follow us on Facebook for updates. And also, and lastly, thank you to the PHDRC Extension Committee for their dedication and continuous efforts for fruitful, fresh talks. Thank you very much. And see you all again. Thank you, Mrs. Morales. Oh, Mrs. No. <laughs> Mrs. Morales. And uh, just a reminder, particularly for those people on Zoom, uh, kindly fill out the attendance and evaluation forms for you to receive your e-certificates. And the link is shared on your screen and posted at the comment section. So please type in your browsers, browsers bit.ly slash presstalks uh, EP9 eval, or you may answer the evaluation form by scanning the QR code. And we will open the link to the evaluation form until tomorrow, 5 p.m., and you will receive your certificates after five working days. So for future announcements, please like and follow the official Facebook page of the PHTRC. And at this point, sir, thank you. Thank you very much again. And we truly appreciate your gracing our uh, invitation. And uh, together also with this homecoming uh, beautiful ladies here at the back. And we would also like to reiterate our acknowledgement of the hard work of the men and women of PHTRC for putting up this webinar. And of course, to Dr. Bautista, Dr. Isguera, Dr. Perdinuevo, Ms. Nening, ay, wala dito, Ms. Nening Morales for facilitating the invitation to uh, Dr. Um, Isumbing for all the arrangements that were done to make this uh, happen. No, And again, thank you to all the attendees for acting actively participating in the webinar and please stay tuned for our upcoming seminars and webinars because this time it's always more of hybrid. We have live audience and we're still at uh, online also because uh, we just discovered that we have lots of people following our uh, Facebook page, particularly for the webinars. And continue following us at uh, Facebook. Southeast Asia. And spread the word to your families, friends, acquaintances, uh, all the freshness and freshies there out there. And again, this has been your host, Deng Maunahan, your extension coordinator. Kita kitsuli tayo next time. And stay safe and God bless everyone. Maraming salamat po and a good day, everyone. Southeast Asia is predominantly agricultural, but increased production of horticulture crops has not been adequate to meet demand. The main cause is high post-harvest loss. A Philippine survey on selected fruits and vegetables showed that post-harvest losses ranged from 32 to 78 percent or even higher under unfavorable circumstances such as typhoons and delayed shipment. Post-harvest handling system is the weakest link in the production marketing chain for fresh produce. High post-harvest losses mean less available food and reduced income for farmers and traders. The time, resources, and labor used for production are also wasted. If losses are reduced by 10%, the country could save millions of pesos per year. The present PHTRC without the ASEAN is known simply as PHTRC. Its vision is to be the center of academic and technological excellence on post-harvest science of tropical horticultural crops in the ASEAN region, 
that is internationally connected and industry-oriented. Its mission is to modernize and enhance the global competitiveness of the Philippine horticulture industry through post-harvest systems development and improvement. The center is guided by its three major mandates. Most post-harvest basic researches in the country are done at PHTRC. It covers morphoanatomy, biochemistry, pathology and entomology, post-harvest physiology, biotechnology, engineering studies conducted in collaboration with the Agricultural and Bioprocessing Division of the Institute of Agricultural Engineering, UPLB, and socioeconomics. These basic researches have led to the development of technologies. The PHTRC extension program and activities include action research projects and technical assistance 